August 24th, 2006. I remember that day like it was yesterday. The International Astronomical Union demoted Pluto from planet to dwarf planet. Riots broke out in the street. Pluto supporters attacked Pluto demoters, yelling, Viva la Pluto in barbaric cries. Okay, maybe it wasn't that dramatic, but some people were pretty upset when Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Also, I think it's hilarious that if you just look up Pluto on Google, its subtitle is Our Favorite Dwarf Planet Since 2006. Welcome to On the Shoulders of Science. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about some awesome scientific facts and concepts in a fun, easy to understand way, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so what makes a planet different from a dwarf planet? Well, part of this comes from the fact that humans love to categorize things, and the International Astronomical Union has somewhat arbitrarily decided that there are three things that distinguish a planet from a dwarf planet. One, it must be in orbit around the sun. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Planets outside our solar system orbiting different stars are called exoplanets, planets that are just wandering the universe on their own trajectory, not orbiting any specific star, are called rogue planets. And bodies orbiting other planets are called moons or satellites. But okay, Pluto checks the list here. Two, it must maintain geostatic equilibrium. That's just a fancy way of saying it's round. What it really means is that it's big enough that its own gravity pulls it into a sphere. If you look at something a lot smaller, like an asteroid, you can see it's just kind of like a big rock. Not massive enough to have the gravity to shape into a uniform sphere. But if you just look at Pluto, you can see that it clearly is round. So it checks the list here, too. And the third requirement is that it must have cleared the neighborhood in its orbit. This means that the planet must be gravitationally dominant in its zone and not have anything else in the way of its orbit besides its own moons. Take any other planet, like Mars for example. In its little band of the solar system, aside from Mars's two moons, there are no other planetary bodies that remotely compare to Mars. Pluto on the other hand, not so much. Pluto shares part of its orbital space with something called the Kuiper Belt, a giant band consisting of small icy bodies, including one class of bodies with the adorable name Plutinos, which consist of Pluto, Orcus, and Ixion, to name a few. So Pluto is not alone in its neighborhood. Pluto might be the biggest kid on the block, but he's not the only kid. So after officially defining these three conditions as the requirement for a planet in 2006, the International Astronomical Union demoted Pluto from planet to dwarf planet. So why was Pluto considered a planet in the first place? Well, because astronomers haven't been able to decide what the definition should be. Ceres, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta all used to be planets, but lost their planet status as neighboring objects were discovered and definitions changed. The current three planet criteria were only put into place in 2006, which goes to show how long it's taken to arrive at our current definition of planet versus dwarf planet. Now, it's important that I also mention that it was only in the 90s and 2000s that we had the tools and resources to find other bodies similar to Pluto out in the Kuiper Belt. The solar system is so vast and sparse that it's really hard to find stuff out there. It actually wasn't until 1992 that we even found evidence of the Kuiper Belt itself, that there was anything else besides Pluto and its largest moon beyond Neptune. When Pluto was discovered, there was no Kuiper Belt, and there were no dwarf planets. Pluto was instead the first of a new swath of cosmic real estate, like dwarf planets, potential dwarf planets, minor planets, and many asteroids and comets. The other dwarf planets, Eris, Haumea, and Makemake, were all discovered in 2004 and 5. So it's not really that astronomers couldn't decide, but that prior to the early 2000s, we were working with limited information about what surrounds Pluto, and what's out there in the solar system. Pluto may be a dwarf planet, but it remains our favorite dwarf planet. Soon I'll be releasing another video on Pluto when I start a fun series where I tell you 10 facts about each of the planets in our solar system. So make sure to stay tuned for that, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you like this video, you might also like my video about why the North Star is always north, or about some misconceptions about the moon. Links also in the description. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.